All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the first word. I am your host, Pastor Rashi Taylor, PT, the sneaker preacher, back once again with three of my friends. So let's start with my upper right, our special guest today. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Andrew Jennings. I bring you greetings from Columbus, Ohio, and I'm so glad to join this panel this morning. Ah, thank you for joining us, my brother. The other doctor down at the, my lower right. <laughs> Dr. Jennifer Patterson, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Dr. Jen, and my brother from another mother. Pastor J.D. Miller, good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. As we always do about this time, we need you to like, share, and subscribe. Why? Because that allows the gospel of the kingdom to be preached into all the world for a witness unto all nations. There, if you're doing your small part, by being an Apple apostle, a digital disciple, an electronic evangelist, you are pushing the word of God forward. That is making his second coming that much sooner. So we need you to go ahead, like, share, and subscribe. Also, we want to remind you that we practice the SPACE acronym here, where we use S as a sin to confess, P as a promise to claim, A as an attitude to adopt or just, C a command to obey, and E, an example to follow. So as you're going through the word of God with us, we just simply ask that you use those little notation marks so that you can keep track of how God is leading you through his word today. So we're going to start with the word of prayer. We're going to ask Pastor Miller to bring us into the presence of the Holy Spirit with the word of prayer. Uh, let's pray, everybody. We are so grateful, oh God, that you can look at us, feeble body, mm -hmm. Nobodies and say, I need you to um, to just stand in the gap, to be the mm -hmm. pages mm -hmm. for somebody to flip and read and, and see who you are. Thank you so much for that, mm -hmm. oh God. I pray, oh God, as we mm -hmm. now enter into the study that uh, that will happen, that somebody will That's turn uh, the pages of their computer and find themselves here and just hear something um, that will give them a new spark of life. Let them know that you are indeed redeemer indeed king and god and savior mm. for everyone that's on this panel on this day and i pray god that uh you will put the words in our mouths and all that mm -hmm. needs to be said will be said for this i pray in christ jesus amen 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 so we're looking at christ shaped lives how we can uh under the direction of our heavenly father the son of god and the holy spirit allow him to shape those of us who are born in sin and shape in iniquity and give us a new start. So we're looking at Ephesians 4 this week, and we'll just start with a brief reading of that word. It says, therefore, for the prisoner of the Lord, uh, therefore, the prisoner for the Lord appeal to and beg you to walk, lead a life worthy of the divine calling to which you have been called to with behavior that is a credit to summon to the summon to God's service living as becomes you with complete lowliness of mind humility and meekness unselfishness gentleness mildness with patience bearing with one another and making allowances because you love one another okay. so jen what does i'm sorry how does no i was right i was right right <laughs> i'm tripping i'm tripping that's me let me rephrase that <laughs> Let me rephrase that because <laughs> I'm confusing myself. What does it mean for Paul to be a prisoner of the Lord? Yeah, I love how the Amplified. Did you read? Did you just read from the Amplified, by the way? I did. I did. You did. I, did. I think there's like two different versions of the Amplified, right? Because I did. I, there is. Know. There's the classic. And yeah. There's the, the regular. Yeah. 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 That was classic. Yeah, no worries. I love it all. Um, so what does that mean um, to walk? Oh, wait, wait. Did you switch the question? What does it mean? No, no, you're right. Okay. What okay. is it? What? What is, I'm, I'm uploading stuff. <laughs> okay. What does the word walk and mean? What does yeah. it mean? Yeah. Yes. It simply means live. Mm. It, okay. it, it simply means live. And I want to reflect back on the scripture on, on at verse one. Um mm -hmm where he says, I appeal to you to live a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, that yeah. walk, that is, live a life that exhibits X, Y, and Z, right? But 
godly mm-hmm. character, mm-hmm. moral courage, personal integrity, mature behavior, a life that expresses walk just simply means this is how I desire for you to live. Yeah, mm. it's not a physical, okay. it's not physical, I'm gonna walk from here to the corner, but mm-hmm. it's how I'm conducting my life. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, uh, my sister. Paul then continues, be eager and strive earnestly to guard and keep the harmony and oneness of the spirit in the binding power of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as also there is one hope. So what's the encouragement for the believers there to nurture the unity of the church. What is what is Paul's conclusion for, for them there, uh, JD? You know, again, you, you said it, Paul, Paul, Paul's desire is for us to be united. Uh, <clears throat> Paul's desire is mm. not only to be united here on earth, be united in Christ. Um, and, and if you notice again, the, the, the language that he uses, and I'm reading from, I think the uh, New Living Translation, with all humility mm-hmm. and gentleness, with uh, patience yeah. being with one another in love. Um, mm. in love being the key piece. Um, you know, we, 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 we use words, but sometimes we jump mm-hmm. over the, the, the main thing. All those words, humility, um, um, being, with, um, being with one another, patience, gentleness, um, he, um, all these words that are being used and phrases that are being used, are words that mm-hmm. really highlight the fact that we have to we have to operate in the love of Christ, not in human um, um, love, but in Christ likeness, um, in the, the love of Christ. Yeah, so that's the conclusion, mm-hmm. really, of, of it all. That we have to, in order for us to 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 experience heaven or experience um, Christ in the fullest, we have to operate as if He we were him on earth, so to speak. Mm. And there's mm. another okay. there's another reference to that walk. Operate. I like that. Like live. Mm. Mm. Operate. Mm-hmm. This is this is yeah. <laughs> right. No, that's good. That's yeah. Good. And if I could if I could just put one more thing out there is that remember the book yeah. of um Ephesians starts with sitting with Christ. And if we Come are on. to sit with Christ, then we have to be we are able to walk in the, the newness, walk in the likeness, walk the way Christ would walk if he was on earth. We are the representation of, of yeah. him. So Christ didn't do anything out of anger. He didn't do anything out of the human nature. Everything that mm-hmm. he did, he says, I, you know, everything I, I'm doing is what I'm, I'm, I'm getting from my father. So if he gets it mm-hmm. from his father, all, to also get it uh, from uh, from Christ himself, model ourselves after Christ. And that's why he said we are hid in Christ. Um, mm-hmm. Romans says we're hid in Christ. And we are walking mm-hmm. in Christ. So therefore, yeah. we're doing anything on our, of our own, but we're doing it uh, because we're in Christ. And that's love. Mm, I appreciate that's you. Good. You're breaking it down, my brother. See, we told you you were a scholar. You, you, got, you got it, brother. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Good word. <laughs> so, 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 Dr. Drew, why are the qualities in verse 2 so important to, to uh, spiritual unity, to church unity? And if you can, give us some examples of how these things help preserve the unity of the church? That's a really great question, Pastor. Um, I There's so much to unpack out of this verse. I, I, as I was looking at it, I was like, ooh, I like this point. Ooh, I like this point. Mm-hmm. I felt like mm-hmm. I was at a buffet and just couldn't make up my mind of, of which parts I really wanted to try to dissect. But I'm, I'm going to yeah, try to yeah. put it down just a little bit. And the two words that really stuck out to me out of that was unselfishness and mildness. Um, and, you know, mm. in your Christian walk, a lot of times we we flat out want to be selfish. You know, we, we want mm-hmm. services to operate our way. We, we want, you know, people to speak a certain way or sing a certain way or act a certain way. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and moving into that, when they're not operating under those circumstances, that's where the mildness <laughs> needs to come in. It's mm-hmm. like, even if they are doing something wrong or, or have some shortcomings that are visible, you know, do we approach mm-hmm. them with that loving, gentle pull them to the side and, and speak to them? Or are we mm-hmm. using that heavy hand that our grandma used to give us? You know, yeah. to me, it was those two points right there that really helped kind of sum up that verse. Of like, if we really want to grow as a church, you know, first of all, we need to put our selfish desires aside, just like Christ did. Mm-hmm. Everything that he did while on earth was for our yeah. best benefit, you know, either to yeah. set an example or to ultimately pay the penalty of our sins. And then in mildness, you know, we see so many examples of where Christ, instead of just, flipping over tables he kind of 
mm-hmm. went in about in his own roundabout way of showing people what they yeah. needed to see. So I think, mm. again, just kind of answering, you know, in a similar vein as the other questions, we, we need to have that mildness and an unselfishness in our Christian walk. Mm. Hey, man, that, yeah. that's that's good. Yeah. That reminds yeah. me of a, of a funny <laughs> video I saw. Like, there was this, this question circulating on on Instagram and Facebook. Like, if you, if you, um, the, the, the cemetery is hiring uh, you to clean up the cemetery for $80 an hour, but you got to work. 10 p.m. to 5 a.m., right? And so you got to be there on the literal graveyard shift. And so one person's response was, the dead have never done anything wrong to me. It's the living I got a problem with. It's the <laughs> living people that when you open the door, they walk right by you like you still trash. When you, it's, it's the living people that treat you nasty as they're your servant in the, in the restaurant. So it's the living people I got a problem with. And that's the real reality part, right? Like this gentleness, this mind, uh, mildness, yeah. this this um, patience, this humility, are for those people living and breathing who treat you a way that you don't deserve, but you're still going to treat them in a way that they do deserve, right? So I, I appreciate you you outlining that because that's the real hard part, right? It's kind of dealing with the living, breathing people who don't treat you as you deserve, but that's the, that's that's where that spirit of mind mildness, not mindlessness. I'm sorry, I don't want to keep <laughs> I don't want to keep messing that up. So let's so let's um let's think of some examples of some things, Jen, um of of either mindsets or approaches that can kind of wreck Christian unity. What are some things that can kind of tear at the fiber of Christian unity? If anybody else has anything they want to add after Jen, feel free. Yeah, something comes to mind. This was, uh, it was during young adult <laughs> years. <laughs> mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, at a certain point, um, you know, in, in church, we were kind of doing, you know, some kind of radical stuff, right? We were kind of standing mm-hmm. out uh, with ministry mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. And um, I remember it was an older deacon in the church and I might need to back off of that example actually, because uh, (laughs) people might, (laughs) people might know. Anyway, (laughs) let me, let me just, let me make it more general. Let me make it more general. I love it. I love it. Yeah. 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 No, I, as I was saying it, I was just like, (laughs) I still got to see these people. (laughs) Yeah. 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 They're going to be like, what's she talking about? Um, Uh That's good. But let me just give the example of, of, of the opposite. When okay. we uh, jump to conclusions um, mm-hmm. about people or about what's going on, and then we treat people according to those conclusions that we jumped. Um, and I want to say specifically how we speak to people, especially okay. when um, the circumstances don't line up with our expectations. Mm. And instead okay. of us operating in humility, instead of us operating mm. in an unselfish way, well, let me find out what actually is going on before I, mm-hmm. you know, you know, I got to go. Mm-hmm. What, are y'all, what are y'all still doing here? Like, I, I, yeah. I need to I need to lock up. <laughs> I'm going to okay. stop there. I need to yeah. stop there. <laughs> but yeah. it erodes. It actually erodes the likelihood or the environment for unity. Mm. When mm, we practice the opposite, right? Because, mm-hmm. you know, let's be honest. A lot of times in church environment, there's there's just a, an air of suspicion. When you don't, mm. you know, when we can't get past, you know, things that don't meet our expectation versus kind mm-hmm. of going deeper. And again, we, what do we come back to all the time? Relationship. Relationship. That's right. Getting to know love people. God, love people. Yeah, Mm -hmm. going there. And then that allows for unity to come because I'm giving space for your Mm -hmm. journey. You're giving space for my journey. But sometimes, you know, we're jumping to conclusions because it doesn't meet our expectation. A lot of times our expectation is far off the mark anyway, because we're not Mm. we're not Jesus, you know. So Mm -hmm. that's what that's what it makes me think of. Yeah, that's good. Any any other things you guys can think of that that kind of wreck unity? Um. I'm going to jump in if you don't Um, mind, Pastor. Um, Go go ahead, go ahead. No, one example that I'm currently going through with, um, we are looking for a new church home. 
Um, mm -hmm. we, we sold our old building and where we were looking to land kind of fell through. But of course, we couldn't, you know, go back to our old building at that point. So we spent yeah. the last, yeah. you know, three years, you know, looking for a new church home. And the people on the planning committee, um, one of the ideas that was brought up was how about we build a gym? hold service mm -hmm. in the gym and then look to expand mm -hmm. and get like a sanctuary, you know, and all that other stuff later on. Now, mm -hmm. the argument behind that was a matter of, well, you can use the gym for recreational activities, you know, basketball, pathfinders, you know, turn into a fellowship hall if need be. And we can have service mm -hmm. in there in the meantime until we're able to get a sanctuary. Well, okay. a lot of our older saints, you know, were very adamant against it. And mm -hmm. it kind of created this rift. And where it's like they want that, you know, typical church with a steeple and a clock, you know, and all that other type mm -hmm, of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it really kind of put a sour taste in the youth's mouth because it's like mm. the gym would be for us. The sanctuary is yeah. really for y'all. Yeah. And mm -hmm. being blunt, we're going to enjoy whatever choice we make a lot longer than y'all will. <laughs> you know, so that's where this rift has yeah. been. And Okay. Unfortunately, is really put an impedance on us finding a new yeah. home. Mm. You know, we've we mm. saw several buildings, we've lost several buildings on this back and forth. And to me, like I said, I think just mm -hmm. going back to you know what was being said back in Ephesians is it's really that unselfishness, you know, and and that gentleness yeah. that you need to be in in really trying to bring us together. Um, yeah. So that was my two pennies. No, nah, that's good. That's, that's a good example. Yeah. Miller, were you gonna were you gonna weigh in? You good? Okay. Can you hear me? All right. So, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Were you, were you, were you, were you wanting to weigh in? No. Uh, well, you know, I think that that's that says enough. I think, I think, I mean, if I'd add anything, I would say, you know, gossiping. Um, mm -hmm. You have, mm -hmm. you have um, people who have their own truths. Um, they make teaching the doctrines and doctrines. Um, a, like, like I think uh, Dr. Jen said it, that we we rob people of their own experience with God by imposing, uh -huh. superimposing upon them our yeah. own um, desires for them. We are having our own mm. struggles. You know? Some of us are struggling at home, but we're trying to give. Yeah. Uh, we try to give. Um, 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 you know, try to let people. I think make people feel as if we are with the saints. You know, while we're mm. you know. Come and tell yeah. other ladies that they're 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 just too short, or uh, guys that they're whatever whatever it might be. We are we are yeah. not allowing people to have their own um, journey with Christ, um, mm. and that is a mm. dangerous place to be because you place yourself in the position mm. of God um, and robbing people, and that's why so many people are robbing people of that experience, and that's why so many people are mm. leaving because. The expectation yeah. is as high as the next member at the church, and mm -hmm. God is saying, "I'm not that mm -hmm. harsh. I'm not that. I'm not that cruel. I see. That you, I see you. I was from. I see. I see where, um, what yeah. you've been through, and I'm gently. Mm -hmm. I'm wooing. You. But when people mm -hmm. come to the church, we don't mm -hmm. move them. We drag come them. On. We push them. We yeah. we, we kick yeah. them. You know. And I can tell you more I can tell you stories. You know. I, I've yeah. passed several churches, so no one knows what I'm talking to, and I've experienced it in all my churches. So, <laughs> I, I see low, though. Now, now you'd have made them all guilty. Yeah, yeah. No, no. That's weird. That's weird. But I, I think, I think, I think um, the 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 ultimate point that I think we're all kind of driving at is be eager and strive earnestly to guard and keep the harmony and right. oneness of the spirit. And right. as, yes, uh, yes. as whether whether you sing alto, tenor, bass, or soprano. The key to harmony is recognizing where you fit in, but all these voices matter, right? right. And so all of us are, are really kind of driving at it's either selfishness or selflessness that's going yeah. to win out. So anytime, anytime it's me over he, we're mm -hmm. going to lose. Anytime it's me over we, we're going to mm -hmm. lose. And so um, I think if we're if we're really eager to, as the scripture says, kind of keep the harmony, mm -hmm. then we're going to try to adopt this selflessness so mm -hmm. um as we as we we, we yeah. push this envelope just a little further this is kind of a three-part question so pick whichever part that that you may either feel is going unanswered because this is for all all four of us 
Uh, what is the reason for unity in the church? And then what does showing tolerance look like? Uh, JD kind of touched on that. What does showing tolerance look like in real life? And then what does it not look like? What is the opposite of tolerance, so to speak? And so, um, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. We we both have the same, <laughs> go, the go, same go axe to grind. Go we got the same axe to grind. Go ahead, JD. Go ahead. You go ahead. You go ahead. Listen, go ahead. I I got hung up on that whole tolerance. I was like, tolerance in the body of Christ. We we over here tolerating go. folk. Like, is that where we mm. are? <laughs> mm. yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. I, I couldn't, I, I, that, you know, that stopped him on my track. So I'm, I'm looking at mm -hmm. what the showing tolerance look like. I just, let me address that. So I can't deal with the whole tolerance part. Let's go back to walk, walk mm -hmm. this way, mm -hmm. live, operate, let this mind be in yeah. you, right? So yeah, it's about yeah. embracing. It's about intentional embracing. It's not tolerate. To when I think of tolerate, I think about putting up with. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and when you put up with something, yeah. you put up with something for a, a, a specified mm -hmm. amount of time. Because yes. ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, you know, I got I got to, you know, mm -hmm, it, how much mm -hmm. more, how much, how much longer? That's not yeah. walking, that's mm -hmm. not living, you know, mm -hmm. in that. Mm -hmm. So learning what is what is what embracing learning education yes. educating myself mm -hmm. shifting mindsets you know what i mean mm -hmm. destroying mm -hmm. stereotypes um acceptance allowing the holy spirit to really work in you while we're walking this out while we're living this out mm -hmm. i can't i can't deal with that tolerance that's, that's yeah. tolerance that's, yeah. that's so it. you would embrace you would replace tolerance with embracing what does yeah. embracing right. look like okay yeah. okay yeah. So Jay, so going seem, back, you seem like you. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go back a little bit for the for the first question. Uh, yeah. um, reason for the unity of the church. Um, in order for mm -hmm. us to have a united um, a church that is united, and the reason for it, first of all, let's go back with, with the unity of the church. Um, in order for us to be united, we the word tolerance has to be taken out. Yeah, as Doc mentioned. Mm use tolerance tolerance uh tolerating a person runs out oh i've tolerated you long enough you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. but tolerate, mm -hmm. uh, tolerance is to me is that's a human word it's a human term uh but when we mm -hmm. look at the words that Christ, uh, what paul used therefore uh going back to verse one and two so therefore the prison i'm a prisoner of the lord i urge you to live worthily worthily of the calling with which you have been called with um, all humility and gentleness with patience, bearing with one another, bearing with one another, bearing no with tolerance, <laughs> bearing with one another, um, in love, making every effort to yeah. keep the unity of the spirit in the body that of part. peace. It's so, so, mm -hmm. so, so, that thing to me is where it rests. The word tolerance is not the right, right word, uh, in my opinion. You mm -hmm. know, it is being able to bear with one another that is not a yeah that is not a human thing that's a divine thing that's good you know? that's, okay that, okay that's what god is that's what god is saying you know the church ought to be and when when that mm -hmm. happens people come to the church now and they see this this bearing with one another um, mm -hmm. um i remember quick 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 story i remember when I went to mississippi when i was in college and uh, mm -hmm. i remember Mississippi and a, a guy by the name, I never I will never forget his name, Tyrone, came to mm. me and he hugged me. And the man smelled like urine and alcohol. Yeah. And every fiber in my body wanted to pull <laughs> away from him. Yeah. Because mm. he was just he was just rank with alcohol and urine, just mixed together. Mm. And when that mm. hugged me, I mean, he started crying and said, you know. You know, thank you for coming, and thank you. For... I got on the bus that evening after we did AY at that church. I rem I don't remember the name of the church at this point. But mm -hmm. I remember Tyrone. That reek smell was still on mm. me, mm -hmm. and I, I took all the way to Mississippi all the way back to Oakwood with that smell. And mm. as I thought about it, that was the sweetest mm. smell. Mercy. Ever. Wow, that's not tolerating. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's hearing with one another. Yeah, that's yeah. the love of God, and that's that's to me is different. And that's why you win people. 
That's what that's what the okay. unity is for winning people. Mercy. All right. All right. I want to challenge both of you guys' a statement just a little bit. Um, I, I see where you're coming from, but I do feel that in real life, sometimes we gotta tolerate. Yeah. You know, okay. I, I am a my my daughter's birthday was yesterday. She is now 14 and every bit of sass, <laughs> you know, that yeah. a five foot three yeah. child must be. Yeah. And uh -huh. I know a lot of times, even in good things, you mm -hmm. know, hey, Samaya, you know, I need you to do A, B, and C so we can prepare for this trip. All mm -hmm. right, Dad, I'll get on it. And they drag their feet, you know, or they find mm -hmm. all these different excuses. And okay. there's a part of you that I think for a better way of description is long suffering. You know, it okay. is painful okay. to wait on them mm -hmm. to make that progress. It is That's true. painful yeah. for them to yeah. reach those goals that they okay. need. And especially even on the negative side of things, like you, we all know we're going to make mistakes. You, you think back between mm -hmm. those ages of 20 to 22, you yeah. know, we, mm -hmm. we made a handful of mistakes. Um, I can remember one time, you know, Rashid himself was, was pointing out to me. I was dating a girl <laughs> I had no business being with. And he let me go through that thing for about a good year. And he just called me up one day and he was like, OK, you know, it's enough enough. You know, oh, wow. he's like, mm -hmm. it's not. It's mm -hmm. OK, but it's enough enough. You know, but during mm -hmm. that time. Time, he let me know after I finally broke up with her, praise God, um, that, you know, he waited for a year before he finally said something, even though it was aiming him to watch. Um, so I do believe that in our Christian walk, it would, especially with people that we love and, and truly care about, sometimes we have to sit by and watch and wait and let them bump their heads multiple times mm -hmm. before they finally see that light or have that aha moment. And okay. and to me, that is extreme tolerance. There, there's no bearing one another. Like that's a little too gentle for me. It's painful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's why I feel like there's no point of tolerance yeah. in this Christian. Okay. 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 All right. All right. So so, so tolerance remember. bearing with one another, right. embracing um um all of those, the, it really funneled funneled down, juice down would be the mm -hmm. word long suffering. Long suffering. Yeah, long of nose. Um, yeah. And, and, yeah, yeah, exactly. Long of long of nose. So that it doesn't even as you're as you're waiting for yourself to get frustrated, it never reaches your face in the way that you become flushed, the way that you become heated, uh, when something is intense. What I want to look at is the is the reason for the unity in the church. Um so shortly before Jesus is is going to the cross, he prays in John 17, 11. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are also one. So unity in the church yeah. is a reflection of unity in heaven and the same spirit that unites father to son and goes all the way around the triangle of the Trinity is the same spirit that ought to unite us. And, and, and he asked that so that they may believe, the world may believe yeah. that you sent me. Yes. Right. So as we go about doing this, we're long suffering. We're bearing with one another. We're embracing one another, which is I love your example, J.D., because if you if you take Jen's word and and combine it with yours, bearing with one another, you actually embrace him. That's why you went home with yeah. his smell on you. We should not leave these exchanges untouched Mercy. by the people we've been with. Right. So the world may believe that you sent me. So when you were in Mississippi, he knew God sent you to him because you left with his scent in your mm. clothes. Come he on. He left with your impression of of and, and your impression of God on him as he walked away. And I I'm I'm I don't I'm sure you probably never seen him again, right? But you've never forgotten him. As you said, I could I can't forget his mm. name, Tyrone. Mm -hmm. And not the Erica Badu Tyrone you talk right. about this brother <laughs> <laughs> that as you as you clearly pointed out smelled of everything that he'd been through right it's one thing not mm. to look like what you've been through but it's mm -hmm. something else to smell like what you've been through yeah. urine and alcohol he was so comfortable with it that that's the way he approached you without cleaning himself up but he left un, un he left changed and you left changed because mm -hmm. you embraced because you endured because you bore with him. Because you were long suffering, even though it disgusted you at first, you stuck with him. And that's, I think that's a, the real revelation of you being one with the spirit is like, nah, this brother needs to hear what you got to say. But more importantly, 20 some odd years later, you're going to use this to open somebody else's eyes who may be a hoity toity Christian and feel like they don't have to get their hands dirty 
or their nose dirty <laughs> to to deal with to deal with to deal with people. What were you mm-hmm. gonna say, JD? I saw you. I saw your hand go. What were you gonna add? <laughs> No, no, I, I think I think that's 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 that that said it all, you know. Okay. Um, it really doesn't matter what what word we use. It's just we have to. If we don't align ourselves with Christ, if we're not in Christ, everything that we do is based upon our, our own strength. Yeah, um, that's right. That's, that's right. What it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the connotation, the connotation for some of these words, uh, in the wrong mouth and in the wrong ear are prejudicial, right? They're like prejudicial terms, tolerate, seems like you're, you're like, you use the example you use, Drew, is, is a father dealing with a daughter. You know what I mean? And, and so somebody may be like, mm-hmm. but you're not my father. So you you don't have to tolerate me. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, I get that. So I, I think a lot of, all of these words really break down to having yeah. that long suffering, long in the nose kind of, uh, of, of belief or approach to dealing with individuals on a one-to-one or a one-to-100 basis. So let's kind of move into, because long-suffering is a, a, a fruit of the Spirit, a gift of the Spirit. So let's kind of move into the spiritual gifts realm, if we can, with this, this, uh, these last 25, 26 minutes. We all have a or several spiritual gifts. Um, so what is yours? Was it earned or deserved? And then the question that's not up there that I'd like to ask is, when did you realize that you had it? Or when was it revealed to you that you actually have the spiritual gift? I, I, I'll jump oh. in. Um, yeah, please. No, it was not deserved. Absolutely <laughs> not. It was mm-hmm. absolutely not deserved. Um, I have a couple of spiritual gifts. Um, one is the gift of teaching. Um, mm-hmm. And one is kind of is, is shepherding slash um, like empowerment. I put that with shepherding because I know those are two from APES, from, from Ephesians. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I think that yeah. I'll, I'll stop there. I'll stop there. Well, did you have another okay. part of that question? Or Yeah, so when did you realize, yeah. when did you realize that, that you had those gifts? I did not recognize that I had the gift of teaching. Um, in fact, I ran from the idea mm-hmm. of teaching, right? Mm-hmm. I was like, who wants to do that? That's like the lowest mm-hmm. on the totem pole. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm going to be a doctor. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to be a, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Nobody respects teachers. Mm-hmm. Right. Meanwhile, but... um. Uh-huh. When, you know, God didn't, you know, the Holy Spirit wasn't like, I'm, I'm going to make you, you know, this is what you're going to, you know, you're going to teach. This is, this is what you're going to be, or this is what you're going to, you know, serve in as part of your career. Holy Spirit's just like, okay, mm-hmm. if that's what you think. And mm-hmm. then guided me into environments where my natural curiosity was peaked. And then I started mm. to search on my own and then found myself in the realm of teaching. And just, I always say that it just felt, it just, when I'm in that um, environment, it's, it's just mm-hmm. like, it's like oxygen, right? Mm. Like it, mm-hmm. it, I, I can't really even explain it, but it's like oxygen. It's just like, it comes out of my pores. Like I just, I yeah. exude, you know, this, this is, and mm-hmm. I know, so I was doing student teaching actually in undergrad. Okay. And okay. it, I just, the whole experience was just powerful to me. And I realized, mm-hmm. oh, this is what you, you've given me. And mm-hmm. it's not just, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong. It's not just teaching as a career. It's right. Right. facilitating learning and growth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I've I'm seen glad you God like that. take that different places, right? Yes. It mm-hmm. it it's mm-hmm. transform. I mean, it, it it transmits into so many other areas of my life. Mm-hmm. And I realize mm-hmm. that this is this is what he's given me. Yeah. 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 Because uh and I'm so and the reason I'm so thankful that you said that is uh I've I've been in several rooms where the nominating committee nominates people to teach in church that have that professional calling 
Right. But they may not have that spiritual gifting. And one lady was wise enough yeah. to turn it down year after year after <laughs> year. Like, I know that's what I'm supposed to do at work, but that's not what I'm supposed to do here at church. And right. finally, you know, we all had to realize, like, maybe she know what she's talking about. Right. Like, we're all trying to get her to take this job because she's phenomenal at work. Right. But she has the recognition that I don't have that spiritual gift. And those are two distinctly yeah. different things. Mm -hmm. uh drew jd what what about you what are what are your spiritual gifts um when or well, were they earned or deserved and and when did you realize that you had these these gifts you want to go first faster or well um <laughs> when did i yeah, realize I when did i realize mm -hmm. it um <laughs> you know some sometimes i i feel that we have gifts and 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 even while we are operating those gifts we we, mm -hmm. we don't even see it we don't even realize that we have them um and mm -hmm. until someone comes and say, says to you that that yeah. you you're good at um you know being a pastor or shepherding you know mm -hmm. you really care for people um you really um see the needs of people and you try to meet those needs you're mm -hmm. you're generally, mm -hmm. generally uh, um a, a shepherd and not all pastors are shepherds. That's true. Uh, ooh, you have say that. Say that again. Say that again. Right. Well, yeah. Not all pastors are shepherds. You know, mm -hmm. because you have some pastors that people, or well, they 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 love um, they love the way they do things, um, but if you ask them, they they will say, um, I, "I don't feel loved by my pastor." You know. Yeah. So mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Um, and as was said, you know, some people are, some people can, can put it on, but when they go home, they are totally drained mm -hmm. because that's not mm -hmm. their spirit love language, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they're not, they're not, they, they are gifted. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. they, 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 they are eloquent in their speech, but mm -hmm. when it comes to and they can they can dissect they can exegete the mess out of a text um mm -hmm. when it comes to operating with that shepherd um uh, yeah. mindset you know they they have to fake it they have to push themselves mm -hmm. wow. you know they're feeling they're feeling as if man i was out of my element mm -hmm. yeah mm. that's good that's good um and I, I think, how do I say this without, <laughs> without, without, without doing, um, without coming across the wrong way. Um, I think if we were, if we were better, if we were more adherent to the spirit and more adherent to the word of God, we would realize that maybe this person is an evangelist. Maybe this person has exhortation, which makes yeah. them a great speaker and makes them a great preacher, but they may not have the shepherding gift. So we would we would kind of be, I think, more diligent in our assigning or our putting together these combinations of, oh, yeah. they have a really good head elder at this church that this brother can come in and be the evangelist exhorter speaker that he is because the head elder is really good at shepherding or there's a an associate there that's good at shepherding. But somebody has to be good at shepherding. Right. But you can't just throw him in and hope he'll get it, you know, kind mm -hmm. of be. We can we can kind of be deliberate about that, Drew. What were you going to say? Um, no, I was going to say for mine. I always thought that like my gift was the gift of comedy. You know, just being able to be <laughs> funny and try to help uh -huh. people. You know, get a laugh. You know, during hard times and things like that. But it wasn't until I was actually yeah. working on my doctorate that I felt like my mm -hmm. real gift was observation. You know, okay. to be able to walk into a room and kind of recognize what's happening in the room and not just in terms mm -hmm. of physical you know things happening but the actual air you know like oh this room mm -hmm. seems really low let's see if we can bring it up with a joke or two or you know this room has a lot of high energy yeah. let's feed yeah. it that okay things like that yeah. um, okay. and it wasn't like i said and i just graduated a couple of years ago it wasn't until then that i finally realized like oh that's what it was that it you know it's really mm -hmm. been that gift of mine yeah. Um, and like I said, to answer the other part of your question, it clearly wasn't deserved. 
it clearly wasn't deserved. But uh-huh. like I said, for so many years, I thought it was just, you know, God made us funny, you know, or, or you mm-hmm. know, that whole kind of thing. Because, you know, when we come mm-hmm. home for the holidays or things of that sort, we all just jokes and jokes and jokes and jokes and jokes. But even back mm-hmm. then, I'm looking back on those moments and I realize it's like, no, it was very high energy in that room. Mm-hmm. And I tapped into that, you know, and provided mm-hmm. into that as well. We kind of had that exchange, you know, say something to make mm-hmm. you feel good. I'll say something to make you feel good. You know, that whole type of thing. And mm-hmm. I feel like that's what God has really given me in a gift. Because a lot of times during service, I find myself running around like a chicken with his head cut off. Like, oh, sister, so-and-so needs a hug. Or, oh, brother, so-and-so. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. That, that gift or observation and yeah. really see what's going on. And like I said, I am in no way, shape, or form a deacon. But by the end of the day, I've done more stuff than the deacon has actually done because it's just that observation. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, it needs to get done. Let's get it done. You know, type of thing. Yeah. So I feel like yeah. that was the gift that God truly has given me, you mm-hmm. know, and I, I really mm-hmm. try to lean into that now, you know, with my service. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. So, so Jen, um, break this down for us. What separates a gift from a talent? Because I think early on, a lot of yeah. us think this is my gift, right? But it may just be, a talent. So what is the difference between the two? Yeah, a, t- a gift is something that you come prepackaged with. You come into this world um, prepackaged with what God has, has put inside of you. Yeah. Mm. Um, and a talent is something, a skill um, or something that you can cultivate, that can be taught, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. that can be improved upon. And I'm not saying that with your gift that you can't, you know, expand Mm -hmm. that and and learn more. But Mm -hmm. for example, um, a lot, probably all of us, when we were a certain age, took piano lessons. Did did all of us take, or some instrument, right? Um, I learned how to play the piano. I learned notes. Mm -hmm. I learned how to, um, that term, musical time. I learned musical Mm -hmm. notation. I learned how to play mm-hmm. chords. I learned how to read music, right? But there's a difference between, and that's what I, I I'll buy music and I'll learn it and play it because I learned those mm-hmm. technical skills. There's a difference yeah. between that and someone who can sit at the piano, hear a song that they've never heard mm-hmm. before yeah. and yeah. pick out those chords and put that thing mm-hmm. together and follow. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. There, there's something different about that. I can't do that. I, I can't play by ear. I don't have that gift. Mm-hmm. Like that, I didn't mm. come. I didn't come with that. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good. And mm-hmm. I, I think, I think the, I, I love that because you have this. You can improve on this independently. Yeah. If it's a talent. That part. But the spiritual part of a gift is that it's God given and God enhanced. That's right. You can't decide that you're gonna maximize right. that. That's 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 huge. I, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yeah. So uh JD he says in what what verse is that? He the part where he says he gave some as apostles, some as as this and this and that. What does he mean when he says that he gave to some uh, uh apostles and, and others this? I'm I'm gonna put that quote up there. It's verse eleven, Ephesians four, verse eleven. And his gifts were varied. He himself appointed and gave to men, some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, um, some pastors and teachers. What does he mean by some this and that? What's the what's the what's the well, well, I, I, the science behind it? Say again. Uh, no, I said what's what's the what's the what's the the meaning behind that? Well, I mean, it's, it's simple. Christ gave it to, to them. Um, mm-hmm. that's, really, that's really what it is. It's, it's not that they um, that they chose it themselves and say, you know, well, ooh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna end up being an apostle. Ooh, you know, you, you know, you, 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 yeah. you, you to pick. No, no, no. It is Christ mm-hmm. who gave to each as he saw, he sees fit. Um, and it's mm-hmm. not just those uh, in those times. It's us as well. Um, and I think you started saying something, but you don't want to open the can of worm. Uh, but let me just yeah. more. Go ahead, you know, go ahead, go ahead. You no, know, some of us are operating um, outside of our gifts. Mm-hmm. Um, some of us are operating outside of our gifts in the sense that we're trying to be something that God has not anointed us with. Oh and my! So, yeah, 
we we uh, or appointed us. Um, he he um, he calls certain and said, "No, you are the apostle. You are the not not everyone. Just because you're you're chosen to be a pastor or whatever you want to call yourself a bishop or whatever you want to call yourself, it does not mean that you're mm-hmm. you have all the gifts that's been in. In, in fact, when you read mm. the text, you realize he's speaking specifically of individuals. You're called for mm-hmm. this. You're called for that. Mm-hmm. And you're called for this. You know." We always want to dub the pastor uh, Superman. Uh, anything you want him mm. to be, you know. Mm-hmm. He, wow. If your tooth, if your tooth is hurting, call the pastor. If, if, if <laughs> yeah, yeah. Call the pastor. Uh, if you baby, baby's been born, call the pastor. I mean, for every yeah. single thing on the face of the planet, mm-hmm. uh, the pastor mm-hmm. is the uh, the be all, and that's not what it mm. means. God is the one who gives the gift. God is the one who gives the gifts. And it gives it all to anyone, everyone. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. So, 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 uh, Drew, what does it mean to feel all things? He gave to some. He gave to some. He gave to some. He gave to some. And what does it mean to feel all things as he shares? And I think that's verse, verse nine or ten. Yeah, the verse ten. He who descended. Uh, is the very same as he who also ascended high above all the heavens, that he, his presence, might feel all things. What does that? What does that mean there? When they, when, when he, when share, he shares that. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but in my studies of this, I kind of got a different uh, uh, spin on it. Um, and what I got from it was he, you know, in in his feel all things, he was kind of giving us the gift of ministry. You know, as as Christ mm-hmm. came down to earth and as he returned, you know, up to heaven, he has now mm-hmm. occupied from the lowest of the low, you know, and now has returned to his heavenly father. And in doing that, we now mm-hmm. have this ministry of Christ and what he's done from us mm-hmm. from, you know, the bottom mm-hmm. all the way up to the top. So we're supposed to share it wherever we go, you know, with whoever we mm-hmm. come across. So that's what mm-hmm. I got out of it. Now, mm-hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, but that's that's what I brought home from no, that's that's that. that I, w- I would agree with you there. Yeah, and I think the scripture in the amplified version agrees with you as well, or you agree with it because it it existed long before you did. Um, but it, it's, <laughs> it's that 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 he who came down and then went back up, yeah, that his presence might feel all things, so that as as the gospel was going forth, as the work was going forth, that he might be at the center of all of that. And as as you pointed out, from the lowest to the low, to the highest to the high, the whole universe. This was all uh, Christ's presence was all encompassing and in every nook and cranny of the work that was being either displayed there because it didn't happen in all the universe. It happened here, but it was displayed for all of the universe. And he was front and center of that. Even the part that Satan had a problem with was really with Christ. Right. It wasn't it wasn't it wasn't the father so much. It wasn't the, the, the spirit. It was it was the Christ issue that even Satan had a problem with. And and Christ was 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 presence was going for us. So I would agree with you on that. I would be yeah, I, any, any, yeah, go ahead, Jen. I was gonna say that's so deep what you all are saying because I'm thinking about the whole unity concept, right? Mm. So that's another mm-hmm. reason why he we really he really wants us to be in unity because he's he is filling his purview, his universe, his everything mm. that he's created with himself, with these God, God values this yeah. kingdom value yeah. you know what i'm saying so if we're not mm-hmm. if we're not operating living going back to walking if we're not walking in unity then mm-hmm. we are kind of we getting in the way of god mm. you know to filling filling you know yeah um, yeah yeah his will his, his his love we're getting in the way of his, the the perpetuation of his love and his will throughout mm. his purview yeah that's that's just what that that's that made me think of no, that. I, I, we're running interference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, we're we're really interrupting what he is trying to do. All right, so we I want to spend a little time on this, so I'm gonna skip this that next mm-hmm. question so that we can get into this a little bit, the spiritual gifts part. Because in all honesty, um, aside from tattoo questions, mm-hmm. weed questions, and sex questions in my teaching and uh, across the board. These are the things that come that come up the most. How can I know my my spiritual gifts? What are they and how can I know what they are? So what we're going to look at 
um, is a, a list of spiritual gifts. Ephesians 4.11 has a list. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11 has a list. Romans 12, 4, 8 has a list. And there's a little bit sprinkled into 1 Peter 4. So what are some of the differences and similarities that you see? But then also, what do you observe? So let's, let's try to make that as visual for everybody else as possible. So what, what, are, what are some things that you see here that, that are going on as well as what's, what's there that's, that's different from, let me move the question out of the way so that doesn't take up space. All right. So what, if, what do you guys kind of see there um, that, that kind of stands out as key, key differences in these two passages? I see characteristics um, of, uh, well, I, um, how, am I, how am I saying this? I see things that are needed um, mm -hmm. to complete the mission, mm -hmm. right? To nurture, okay. to nurture people as well mm -hmm. as so the micro and the macro picture I see here, nurture, nurture, okay. grow mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. in relationship, but also this advances the mission. So I, I see pieces, mm. necessary ingredients that will facilitate that. That's yeah. What I see. Yeah. What about you, Dr. Drew? And then I think there's a, a little bit there as well. Um, Ephesians 4 has those that they listed. No, I, I, I guess that sounds sound like I'm piggybacking off of Dr. J, but I do feel like I said, um, a lot of them are, mm -hmm. like I said, the more nuts and bolts, you know, of the ministry. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Like I yeah. said, you know, when when the pastor gets up at, you know, 11.30, 11.45, depending on how long your prelims are, um, you know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what are all the things that have happened behind the scenes to get that done? You know, somebody mm -hmm. had to mm -hmm. the order of services moving. Somebody had to, mm -hmm. you know, watch the parking lot to make sure people got there. Some mm -hmm. people, you know, had to greet the new members and make sure that they were given a handshake, a hug, or, you know, whatever the case may be. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all of those things, you know, are helping to support, you know, whoever gets up on that stage. But all of them are needed to make mm -hmm. that that whole effort of uh, evangelism, you know, work. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Like I said, because I'm looking at the one where it talks about, you know, giving um, and helps. You know, mm, mm -hmm, some mm -hmm. people can write a check, yeah. But some people yeah. all they got is sweat equity. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like mm, I can come mm -hmm. the grass. You know, I can come yeah. help set up chairs and move chairs or whatever. That's right. You know, so it's like, right. but all of these are a vital part. Yes. Of of spreading that message. Yes. So I, mm -hmm. I think, like I said, you know, they I feel like they're they're attacking it, you know, from different ways. But it's like, but every single part of it is needed ultimately to you know bring on the the, the news that Christ is coming. I think uh, what also stands out to me, and I want to hear from you too, JD. Um, I think what also stands out to me is that the same man, especially in these first three, Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, Ephesians 4, were written by the same man, but they yeah. don't have the same prescription for each congregation. So it's very personal and deliberate for the congregation that it's written to. Not that, that, that the Holy Spirit is withholding something from the Ephesians that he gave to the Corinthians, but Paul, as he's under the direction of the Holy Spirit, is, is considering the people who are there who have those gifts, but also the people who are needing the re to receive the benefit of those gifts, right? So there's somebody who needs healings there and there's Come somebody on. there that can provide it. There's somebody who's needing tongue interpretation and there's somebody who can provide the gift of speaking those languages that may not be necessary in the church in Rome or in the church in Ephesus as well. So I see those, those kind of things coming coming together and then of course there's some overlap i think prophecy is always always necessary in yeah. a congregation teaching is always necessary in the congregation and and uh wesley knight kind of made it crystallized for me um in his gift of prophecy classes he was teaching um that that we kind of see prophecy as daniel and revelation yeah. based right as opposed to this person is a messenger of the lord with a message for a specific group of people for a specific time, right? So there are prophets that continue still into this day. So every congregation needs somebody that has that that type of connection and type of calling on their life. JD, what you what do you see that kind of stands out to you in this in this section? Oh, you your your mic. Let me. I'm always doing that. Sorry. Um, <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> in, um, 
in in the um, Ephesians, uh, he speaks specifically the noun, the 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 call to the person. But mm. in, in Corinthians, he called to the action. Um, mm. Ooh, ooh, okay. Yeah. So that yeah. that kind of stands out to me. Okay. Um, and I guess there's, there's most more study needs to be done. But I, I'm, I'm, I think when I saw this, I kind of begin to wonder why is he, you know, pastor, mm -hmm. um, uh, mm -hmm. prophet, is um, mm -hmm. uh, the spirit calls some the prophesying as opposed to mm -hmm. he calls prophets. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, I guess you know, and then the other thing in uh, Corinthians is that um, that he, he emphasizes that the Spirit was one who calls, not that he doesn't mm -hmm. do that for um, Ephesians, but he specifically uh, states um, in each one the Spirit's calls, the Spirit's calls, mm. the Spirit's calls. Um, and I, I, you know, like I said, you know, more so need to be done. Um, and just want to see why he chose to to, to do that. I know that. If Doc Allen might be watching, <laughs> he might be saying, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you were my class, but um, that, that those, <laughs> those things are those things are very important to kind of find out why is it that, that he uses um, the the noun and one and uh, the action verb or the ver action word or term to to to, to express the other. Um, but that's what stood out to me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. With our last few minutes, um, yeah, we have two. So, with our last few minutes, what was um, and Jim, we'll give you we'll give you the the last question here. What was what was the purpose in giving these gifts and calling them to work in the church? Yeah, I I'll just repeat what I said before that it's just to nurture to nurture individuals mm -hmm. to nurture the body mm -hmm. and to perpetuate the mission to facilitate. Mm -hmm. um, making disciples and taking the gospel mm -hmm. to the world, you know, this, I, I think about the human body, you know, mm -hmm. and all of the parts mm -hmm. and all of the functions that are related to the parts and how all of them, I think about the engine under the hood of a car, all of those parts that have their function to make that car go, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. to carry carry people from, from point A to point B. So I, I see that the same way. It's because it's, it's to power this, this vehicle, this vehicle of okay. love and God's will um, and prepare, you know, the world for his, his coming and for eternity, All right. honestly. Yeah. All right. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Yeah. So let's, if, since Jen left a little meat on the bone, uh, let's, let's move into the, <laughs> The winds of doctrine, because there are some winds of doctrine that are blowing mm. through our church. So really brief, uh, Dr. Drew, um, why would an immature believer be tossed kind of here and there to and fro mm. by the winds of doctrine? And how can this be kind of dangerous? All right, I'll keep it quick since I know our time is running long. Um, in short, a lot of our new believers come in heavy on emotion. You know, mm -hmm. they, they're either at the lowest point in their life or they really needed something or God stepped up in a way, you know, that they never seen or known before. Um, so when you are high on emotions like that, that's very easy mm -hmm. to be tapped into, you know, mm -hmm. and like I said, some yeah. people are great speakers, but not necessarily yeah. great shepherds. And they yeah. can actually mm. manipulate that to their advantage. You know, um, we all have heard, you know, tons of stories about those type of things. But I think mm -hmm. it's just one of those, like I said, especially with new believers, you know, they, they come in on that emotional high, you know, so to say, mm -hmm. and not knowing really which way to go because they're babes in Christ they can very easily just be misled by a non-shepherd. Mm. Mm. That's good. No, I appreciate Mercy. that. I appreciate that. And so um, I think the the key to, to for us to be doing it as we, we finally, I mean, we close out with our last few words is, I uh, just want to leave this with, with everybody. Finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So as we try to figure out if this doctrine is legitimate, as we try to figure out if this doctrine is real, if this little tidbit that somebody is pushing, polyamory, whatever it may be, is there a biblical skeleton inside of that? Is it revealing the truth of God and his perspective on whatever that idea or ideal may be? If, and if it doesn't 
reveal the skeleton of the spirit, then it may not be true and it may not be of truth. And if it's not of truth, then that's built by the father of lies, Satan. And there's only one direction that that points to, and that is indeed death. So my brothers and sisters, we just encourage you to stay with God's word. This has been the first word. I am your host, Pastor Rashi Taylor, where we let the Bible have the last word. I want to thank Dr. Drew for being with us. Thank Dr. J. Doc, thank Pastor J.D. Miller. And we will see you all next time. Be safe.